My name is Katherine Bradshaw, and I am a professor at the University of Virginia and also the deputy director at the Johns Hopkins Center for the Prevention of Youth Violence. We often hear from schools that they don't have a lot of strategies that are feasible and acceptable in real world settings for preventing bullying. So one of the approaches that we recommend is to use the tiered positive behavior support framework as a way of organizing different strategies and programs to promote a positive school climate and orientation towards youth. The public health approach has been adapted for several different areas of youth development and development across the life course, anything from putting fluoride in the water to getting flu shots. But we can also apply those types of frameworks to preventing and understanding bullying and children's mental health. And so that uses a tiered framework where you have a universal type of intervention, prevention model that addresses the needs among everybody in the school building, but acknowledging that there are gonna be some kids that have greater needs and risks and that require a second tier or a selective type of intervention. And then at the third tier, we have more intensive type of supports that might even include the family and other community-based resources. That's what we call a tier three, or an indicated type of preventive intervention. Positive behavioral interventions and supports is a three-tier prevention model developed out of the University of Oregon by George Sagai, Rob Horner, and Hill Walker and colleagues that has caught on like wildfire across schools in the United States as well as up here in Canada. Thus far, there are about 20,000 schools across the North America that are implementing this model. And we have recently conducted a series of trials or rigorous tests of that model and shown that it is having a significant impact on things such as suspensions, disciplinary problems, even improving the school climate and academics. The framework can be applied by providing training to teachers on knowing when and where bullying is happening in the school, emphasizing the use of data to be able to identify the concerns from different perspectives, both youth perspective as well as staff perspective, having a team to coordinate the prevention activities within the building, being able to monitor the impact of those programs, and being able to prioritize resources to address issues around bullying. The positive behavior support framework is more of a framework rather than a program, and so it talks more about how you should do business in your school to address a wide range of issues, including bullying, but it doesn't focus exclusively on that. And it also addresses issues around substance abuse prevention, gangs, even academic concerns, which was really the original focus. But it's more of a way of operating your school and managing it and providing training and support to teachers about how to intervene with situations appropriately and how to address those problems when they see them and what kind of referrals are needed and resources to address problems that are exceeding the teacher's own resources. So it is really growing exponentially. You can go to the website by the National Technical Assistance Center for Positive Behavior Support, which is available at www.pbis.org. And they actually even have a little counter at the bottom that shows the number of schools that have received training in this particular framework. And there is an international association called the Association for Positive Behavior Supports that hosts an annual meeting of schools and different implementers and researchers doing work. I've served on the board of the Association of Positive Behavior Support, and I'm just recently stepping down from that. But I would definitely encourage people to check out the resources that are available through the Association for Positive Behavior Support, as well as the National Technical Assistance Center for Positive Behavior Support.